Hey guys, so uh, I had this random idea yesterday of doing a uh, virtual field trip for everybody. Um, I'm in Florida here at the moment, um, which you probably can't tell from the weather, but look, palm trees, woo! Um, and I'm here for the launch of the very last space shuttle mission ever. This is currently the end of the uh, manned spaceflight program as a whole, actually, in the United States. There's nothing replacing the shuttle. Uh, the Russians are the only one with a functioning manned spaceflight program left after this week. So uh, I am going to do some videos and show you guys around the um, Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex and have a video of the launch and tell you a little bit about the shuttle and uh, why it's so cool and why the end of the program is a big deal. Uh, but right now, I'm going to go buy some sunscreen and an umbrella. So, stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm packing for the launch. Umbrella, sunscreen, tripod for one of the cameras. I am actually bringing two so that I can take videos with the one I'm taking a video with right now and still shots through a telephoto lens there. Binoculars, because even the uh, so-called VIP area that I'm going to is actually six miles away from the shuttle. Any closer and you get like eardrum shattering and not cool stuff like that. Lawn chair and backpack. And somewhere down in the car, I think, I have a uh, four liter bottle of water. Why the chair and the four liter bottle of water? Well, because, um, I actually have to wait around for this thing for a number of hours. See, how it works is the launch is at about 10.30 tomorrow morning, or at least that's the window for it. Um, but I have to leave Orlando on a bus at 2 o'clock in the morning because it takes an hour to get there and about two hours to go through security procedures and then another hour to get on another bus from the visitor center to the actual launch viewing area. This is what happens, I guess, when people are afraid of someone trying to blow up a space shuttle. Like, that doesn't happen enough on its own. Anyway, um, the launch window, uh, for around 10.30 tomorrow, I believe, is actually only about half an hour long. And there's currently a 70% chance that the weather during that window is going to be too bad for the shuttle to launch at all. The window's that short because they, uh, they want... They want to launch when the International Space Station is as close as possible to where the shuttle will enter orbit because they're supposed to meet up with the station and they don't want to use too much fuel. So the International Space Station travels so quickly that there's only a half hour period about every day when it's close enough for the rendezvous to work properly. So if there's a thunderstorm during that period, the shuttle doesn't launch. They scrub it. They scrub the launch. That's what NASA terminology is for cancelled. And they try again during the next launch window, which in this case is the next day. Uh, when apparently, unless the weather forecast has changed, there is only a 40% chance of the launch being scrubbed due to weather. And then the day after that, there's a 30% chance of it. So all three days together, the chance of the launch not happening in that time frame of, of three days is only about 16%. Um, here's the math. But that's still significant. Shuttle launches, uh, they're unpredictable things, unfortunately. And of course, after Sunday, uh, there's not another window, uh, because NASA's busy with other things, for another week. So if it doesn't launch by Sunday, I have... Uh, well, not exactly come here for nothing, but yeah, let's go with that. Hey guys, welcome to the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning right now, and uh, the bus doesn't leave for the viewing site until 5 in the morning, so we have a while to explore around here. Ta-da! That's a full-sized uh, replica of a space shuttle. This one has never gone into space and never will because it's probably mostly plastic inside. And over here we have, I think it's not quite full-sized, the booster setup. So, 
Space Shuttle 101, for those of you who don't know what's going on with this whole big set of uh, spacecraft components. Basically, these white things, there's one on the other side of there too, those are the booster engines. That's what actually carries the Space Shuttle most of the way up into space. And that big orange thing in the middle is a fuel tank. So, that is a fuel tank that is Ooh, at least uh, a couple hundred meters long, if I remember correctly. This is like a half-size model right here, I'm pretty sure. And that orange thing, the fuel tank, is actually the only part of this whole system that isn't used again. These boosters, they fall away first once the shuttle's up at an altitude where it can carry itself, and they parachute back down to Earth. The fuel tank disintegrates in the air. They build a new one every time. And then, of course, the shuttle itself goes up into space. And when it's done with its mission, it flies down and it lands on a runway, which is pretty much like a normal aircraft runway, except it has to be almost two miles long, because the space shuttle is going so fast when it first hits the ground that if it didn't have a runway two miles long, it would crash off the end of the runway and uh, probably run over whatever was in its path before it exploded, which would be, you know, bad. This is the lower deck of the space shuttle mock-up here. That's, we're in the payload bay right now, which is actually the largest section of the shuttle. That's some kind of satellite, obviously a fake one, and I have no idea what it would be for. That's the airlock. This section of the shuttle isn't pressurized, so you need to wear a spacesuit even inside here. Go in and out through that. Sleeping quarters. Of course, in zero gravity, you don't need a bed. You sleep strapped to a wall or in a chair. And over here, we have probably the most ingenious thing NASA's ever devised, which is the space toilet. I have no idea how it works, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to find out. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot. Look, there's our contribution up there. Uh, the big robot arm that uh, moves everything in and out and was developed in... Somewhere in Ontario, I believe. Okay, on the upper deck now. Slightly different view of the same space towards the back, just the payload bay again. But over here, we have this creepy looking faceless astronaut and the flight deck. Actually, seems to have fewer buttons than a 747. So that's the shuttle we were just in. It's called the Explorer. Again, it's not a real one. It's never flown anywhere. And on the way back down, they have these posters telling us all about how the stuff NASA's done is important here on Earth. In fact, it seems to be lost on whoever decided to stop the shuttle program without replacing it with anything. Okay, you may notice it's daylight. Um, that's because I forgot to do this last night, so I'm going to slot it into the video um, when I should have done it, even though I'm actually taking it the next day. But uh, I forgot to show you the tiles. This is the bottom of the wing of the space shuttle. If you see these tiles, these are the tiles that are designed to protect the shuttle from the heat and friction of re-entry. I'm gonna see. They kind of they kind of feel like a cross between plastic and rubber. But without these, a shuttle would burn up from all the friction in the atmosphere. It would be set on fire, it would explode. And if just one of these failed, one of these hundreds of tiles fell off. That would actually be a possibility. So in that way, they are actually one of the most important components of the space shuttle, even though they're just just a little thin thing on the outside. So, I am going to go see what's in here, because that name on the building sounds kind of cool. Okay, so I've just been in there, going through a simulated shuttle launch, which was pretty cool. You sit in this big thing with about 30 other people and you get tilted around and pushed around and basically, except for the G-forces, it's 
what it feels like to uh, go through the first eight minutes of a space shuttle mission. Um, also learned something interesting about the shuttle that's going up today. They had these plaques, one for each uh, mission one for each shuttle mission in the history of the program, which is 135 of them, by the way, as of today. And at least four of the ones for Atlantis were secret Department of Defense missions, so for some reason, the spy-slash-military types really like Atlantis, and that's the shuttle that's going up today, but it's a more mundane thing today, I believe. I'm gonna go see if I can find an actual uh, a spot where I can actually see the launch pad. We're looking at the launch site right now. It's that sort of uh, white blob in that hazy mist over there. Um, but you can see there, that's a live feed from a camera that's closer to it. So it's actually pretty clear over there. It's just mist in between us and the launch pad. Okay, so I just managed to have something to eat. I don't want Neil to call it at four o'clock in the morning, but something and uh, go into the space shop, but uh, here's what it looks like inside. Oh yeah, and something else kind of interesting that I came across. Spot the deliberate mistake. Someone in the clothing factory is a little bit political. Anyway. It's 4.30 or so, and I have to be on a bus at 5.30, so I'm going to go collect my stuff from the locker and hope nobody's stolen my folding chair. Alright guys, so uh, you're about to be very glad that you're watching this on a video because... That's the line to get to the bus to get to the place where we can watch the launch from. Yeah. Well. There it is, six miles away across the water. The good news at the moment is that it's actually not looking too bad up in the sky. The weather's been clearing up over the last few hours, so let's hope no one up there gets angry with me for saying that, and it stays that way. Three hours away from the launch still. No further word on whether it's going to happen, but I'm assuming it will just because I'm an optimist. Before that happens, quick explanation of what's going to happen. That thing's 10 kilometers away, so... Uh, sound will take 30 seconds to travel here from there, so we'll actually see it ignite a long time before we hear anything. And we'll see that six seconds before launch, the main engine's gone. And then at the launch moment, the boosters are gone start, and by the time it clears the tower, which isn't much distance, it's already going 100 miles an hour. And it'll shoot up across the sky, I think it's going to go to the east, and the whole thing will be over in moments, and that's what I've been here for 8 hours for. It's about 9.15 now, still buses coming and going, but I think we've got about 45 or 50 stacked up here. Maybe 3,000 people came in on those. <laughs> Two hours to launch, anyway, and the sky is looking about as promising as it was before. My completely uneducated guess is we've got a 50-50 chance right now of seeing this happen today. Alright, just another quick check-in. We're at about 45 minutes before the launch and there was just an announcement that if the weather doesn't change, which it hasn't in the last eight hours, we're going to see this launch today. So, uh, cross your fingers, even though by the time you see this it'll be like two weeks past. Whatever, I don't care. One minute, apparently. So I'm going to try and do something very clever with this video camera and uh, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, you're going to get a few minutes of shots of grass.